Warriors Dejean uh, Muhammad II, when I introduced him and I came down, he just shook his head. <laughs> and the light came on. And you saw what he did, right? That's right. He came up and he uh, had uh, uh, Warriors Dejean Muhammad II, myself. Uh, and Allah must have inspired uh, Warriors Dejean Muhammad because for some reason he had his Muntaz to come up there. And then, uh, then he uh, went, uh, sent out for his son, Wallace. He didn't know why we was coming up up there. I had no idea why the mayor wanted us to come up there. And so when we got there, uh, the mayor he put our hands uh, on top of each other, and um, and uh, that beautiful picture that you see in the Muslim Journal, That's right. that was spontaneous. And that mayor said that he supported uh, Imam W. D. Muhammad and he supports the mosque here. And, uh, and that picture is just uh, you know I got gray hair. <laughs> and and working Muhammad II, he's uh, in his uh, early 40s, and his children there in that photograph. And then uh, Hasek's son, who's the imam, he's, he's uh, like about 35 or so. He came up, he said he saw what uh, what the mayor was doing. He had said, I got to get in on this too. <laughs> Allah way far. And this gentleman, he's not a part of our community. He is now. <laughs> he is now. He's always been a friend of the imam. But he had to make a point. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Well, uh, we, we're in the, uh, uh, the portion where I uh, do the uh, Arabic class. I won't take this as, as uh, long because uh, um, the, uh, the program, the way it started out, started out a little different. And um, But uh, I will uh, want to hit on a few things. And um, I'd like to start it out by uh, this word right here. Can you see it? Okay. This is We're going to start out with the uh, word Muhlisina. I was listening to the, uh, the uh, they call it the lifeline because uh, the people that's on there, they pretty much every morning, they uh, around Fajr prayer, uh, they have a talim. It starts uh, about 5.30 to 6.30. And uh, the uh, um, it's working out okay. And let me start my timer. And believe me, we're you know we're, we're moving right along. This uh, program, everything is falling into place. And um, all right, this is the word right here. I think you might have seen it before. And the, um, the translation that, that the uh, young gentleman uh, did this morning was purity, because uh, you find this word in the chapter Ikhlas, the purity of faith. And uh, yeah, it means purity, but uh, but if, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means uh, to conclude, or complete, you know, conclude and complete. And um, so the Arabs, anytime they were in a, like a discussion, like a round table discussion, and they just, uh, they'll talk on a point, at a certain point in time, you know, when you talk on a point, at a certain point in time, you got to come to a conclusion. So they say, a lot, you know, and that, uh, that's concluded. And so uh, the, the chapter of Hiklas, the purity of faith, that means uh, then uh, the conclusion. So if you go through the... Uh, the uh, the it, and then you see there is the conclusion. And then uh, the uh, from that word you have mukhlisina, mukhlisina. How like that? Mukhlisina. So uh, basically, it says those that follow things to its conclusion. The Imam he interpreted. See, the Imam he adds more to it, more depth, because the Arabic word is uh, it's, it's, uh, has many meanings, a broad meaning of it. And he translated mukhlisina as meaning. Follow the logic to its best conclusion. And, there, and uh, I think uh, in the Quran it says, uh, uh, so We are those who follow the logic to its best conclusion and uh, belongs to him the debt. Who is to him? It's a lot. But not only do we owe a lot a debt, because deen means debt. It means a religion, but it's also from the word that also means debt. So that means we owe a lot a debt. And uh, what debt do we owe? We owe my life. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Um, before I go a, a little farther, I had to mention a point, you know. We did so much within the last week. 
we had the uh, Juma, we had uh, the Savior's Day program, we had the uh, uh, Good Government program on Saturday. Well, I got a phone call, this is a little off the subject, but it's very important. I got a phone call like Thursday, it's a friend of mine that works on computers, uh, very reasonable. And, you know, when you work on computers, everybody needs a computer, so he's running all different types of people. And so, uh, could we please open the door and, uh, uh, so we can get some air in here? Um, um, in fact, even the back door, uh, you get some air in there. Um, so, uh, the phone call was, um, there was an individual that was on, on his phone, he did a two-way. said that uh, this individual uh, parent had passed away, a uh, relative passed away, and he requested that he have a memorial uh, that would have a Muslim, a, a Christian, and a Jew on that memorial. But this person is a Catholic, Irish Catholic. So uh, uh, the brother asked that. Uh, he hooked me up to him, and he said, you know, basically he just said, this, I got this person who wanna, uh, looking for an imam. And he hung up, so I was talking to this, uh, this white lady on the phone, uh, and uh, she asked me would, uh, uh, she needed an imam, and would I come to that memorial? And I said, yes. And uh, I, I went uh, representing uh, the ministry of Imam Deputy Muhammad. I thought, you know, I was going to be maybe like the 30th Street downtown or something like that. I wind up downtown, in the heart of downtown. They must have paid over a hundred some thousand dollars for this funeral and memorial. Uh, anybody ever heard of Matt Lamb? Good. Okay. Uh, uh, you're in Chicago. You should, should have known it, but we, a lot of times we don't pay attention unless it's one of our own. So, <laughs> but Matt Lamb, let, let, let me go through the whole scenario. This, uh, so here, I, I get downtown, I come in into an uh, auditorium, large auditorium, nothing but Irish Catholics in there, nothing but white people. So I come in sitting down, and I, they'll probably all look at me, oh, what's this guy doing here? You know what they probably say. So, so, uh, so uh, then uh, they had the, uh, up on the stage, they, uh, they, they, uh, somebody saw me out there, pulled me up on the stage, and said, you're on the program. I opened the program, there I was, you know, yeah. had a Catholic there, had, a, had me as the imam, and, and uh, a Jewish person, and uh, it had a, a preacher that was very close to this guy. I thought that was Reverend Falwell. I mean, he probably had about $3,000 suit if they got one, uh, so he must have had a big, giant congregation. And so, uh, so here, uh, I'm sitting on there on, 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 uh, with these people, representing the ministry of Imam Deputy Muhammad. For some reason, they had uh, uh, a member of the uh, CIOM, that's the Council of Islamic Organization of, of Chicago, something like that, CIOC. Then they had a, right, and then they had a, a young uh, uh, sister there. Uh, I don't know why she was there, but they were on the side, uh, on the side of me, but they were not actually on the physical program. So the, the preachers, they got up, they started speaking, and then uh, the Catholic got up, they started speaking. So I'm hearing all about this guy. Wow! Wow! I mean, it's just kind of uh, going on, you know, that this guy, he uh, owned one of the largest funeral homes in Chicago, uh, and a uh, lamb funeral home. And that, not only that, he uh, he, had, uh, he said, uh, I might, might not have it totally right, but I, 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 that's the way I heard it. He had, made, he had said that if any police officer died, uh, like maybe uh, in the line of duty or something like that, he would give their funeral for free. Now, you know he got friends in the police department. This guy is not only that, he's a sculpture. He, he owns a funeral home, he's a sculpture, he's a painter, and his paintings are all around the world. He's got over 30 museums all around the world. And uh, so he, I'm hearing all this stuff. And then uh, uh, they were saying that he, uh, his main goal was peace. And he is known for walk, uh, doing peace marches all around the world, and their symbol is an umbrella. And they walk around the world you know, uh, for peace. So I'm hearing all, all about this guy. So I'm saying, wow. Now here, I'm, I'm coming up there, and they're probably looking at me. No, what did he say? And I'm looking, we're looking for you. Ma'am, you know what they thought the man was going to look like. <laughs> right? Here's the key. My whole conversation. The key is the Imam W.D. Muhammad bust all the invisible ceilings out there. That's right. He made friends in every walks of life. So how did I approach him? When Imam W. D. Muhammad's name. Imam W. D. Muhammad, he said, he said that uh, a lot of times, you know, if a, a person comes to you, he got a PhD or whatever like that, 
They don't eat questions.